In this quick tutorial, we'll cover elements of uh, the scenes within Blender. And you should be familiar with the uh, 2.638 beginning tutorials that I have for new Blender users. And I have it in a playlist on my YouTube channel. So what I have in here is just a simple cube. And maybe I'll just add something else just to have something else in this scene. Maybe I'll add a cone right there. Better give it a color. All right. So you have a hope oh, that doesn't really match that very well. Okay, that's good enough like that. All right, so what we have is this scene, and this is the same thing as uh, we've done with colors before, where it's good habit to say, you know, uh, I don't know, it's not really quite purple, but I'll call it purple. You know, you name your colors, and then I press N here like this, and I come down here, and I name my cone. I go, you know, I don't know, Mark's cone like that. And then uh, so then the same thing in your scene. So you come up here and you click in this box and you name the scene and you just say maybe it's your main scene like this. All right. But so what we're going to do is we'll have multiple scenes within here. And first of all, let me take a camera like this and I'm going to highlight this here. I'm going to point it at this object. I'm going to track that Alt T. No, I'm sorry, sorry, Control T. I'm going to track to the constraints. So now the camera is looking at the object. And we can verify that with another window over here, pressing 0 here. So there it is, looking at that object like that. All right. But in the new scene, maybe I want to have something different. I'll move this over like this. So then in the new scene, and we'll, call it, we'll just call it a new scene. Well, first of all, click here, and you see it has only the main scene in here. All right, so when you go over here and press this plus button, it asks you to add a new scene. So notice there's all these different type of settings. There's new copy settings, link objects, etc. We'll get to these in just a second. But for the moment, let's just add a new scene. And it starts off completely blank. So it's brand new. But that's not really what I wanted. I wanted something that was, you know, that tied to my original scene. So what I can do is, so now I look in my list, it shows my main scene, and there's the new one I just added. So I don't really want that, so I'm going to come over here and press that X button and take it back to here. So let's look at another way to do it. Let's press the plus button again. And now we have copy settings. That looks, here we, these are really your types you're, you're looking for. Link objects, link object data, and full copy. All right. If you do a full copy, it is literally, it's a full copy of the scene. Everything is new, but it also takes up all the memory in your scene, you, as much memory because you're having to replicate all the data. But so instead, one of the ways is you can either link the objects or link the data. And a link is like a pointer and see if you're a programmer or type. You know, you're just pointing to where the data is instead of actually having a new copy of the data. All right. So what? Let's try this one here first. So this says link object data. So what it does, it actually makes a copy of the objects, but it doesn't make a copy of the data, and the data being your materials, your colors, and your thing and things like that. All right? And this one, link objects, that's going to link everything. So let's just try that. So what it means is it's not copying at all. It's actually just pointing to the original scene. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'll make I'll press link objects and that's just called main scene.001 and you can see there's our main scene and let's see what main scene 001 does so there are two different things but they look the same so now let's go into here and we'll take the cone and these are linked to each other so now I'm going to change the cone to a red color all right and now I'm going to go back to the other scene these are distinct scenes I'll go back to the main scene and it's the exact same thing it's because what I've changed in this scene is changing into the other scene because it's the exact same. When you're linked, they're just it's pointing to the original location, and so whatever you're changing in here changes in there. So, or if I'm in the main, let me go into the main scene and turn this object blue, like this. Uh, let me see. Hang on, pick the wrong object. Let's go into this scene, and we'll change this to oh, I don't know. We'll change it to purple. That way I can see it. And then we'll go over to the other scene here. Press this button. And it's still purple like that. All right. So that's really what you're doing. When you're linking, you're saying, all right, I'm just connected to the existing one. Whatever I do in one changes in the other. All right. Now let's try another one. Let's add another scene. And we're going to add this time. We're just going to link the object data. All right. So 
I'm coming into here, and in the object data means the colors are changed. So let's change this to green. Like that. So if we go back to scene one, it's still green, right? May still green. Doesn't really look like it's doing anything. However, now let's take this object and let's move its location. Because all we're linking is data. We're linking colors and materials and things like that. But we're not linking locations and rotations and things like that. So le now let's go back to scene one. So it's still green. And let's go back to scene zero. And it's still green. But in this case, in scene two, now your object has been rotated and moved. And so now, just by switching scenes like this, you can switch things around like that. And in fact, even notice in your camera view over there, your camera view is changing as well because of it. All right, well, it's kind of a little tricky concept to get used to if you're not familiar with the concept of pointers and linking, but just practice with it and experiment. And it's really useful because if you have a, some limitations on your computer power, it can really save you a lot of memory by not, you know, storing too many resources uh, in memory at the same time. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.